Hey, it's Camo with the Nashville Access Facebook Show, presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments, where taste matters. Doing something a little different today, my beloved Tottenham Hotspur are in the Champions League final this weekend on Saturday against Liverpool, and I can't watch the game, so I'm getting in my plug any way I can. Uh, speaking of guests, which we weren't, uh, <laughs> but we've got one for you. Uh, who just happened to be wandering the streets. Travis Rice, how you doing, man? Doing well, Kevin. How it's are you? Good. It's great to have you back on it's the good show. good to be back, man. Always. Let's sit down yeah. and, and uh, pretend we're entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, let's, let's do this first, because I don't often get to hold up a poster. Uh, it's a sharp poster. It is a very good big paper. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the 615 Live event presented by Brickshaw Media on Friday, June 7th, as part of CMA Music Fest, and, and you're there, you're playing. I am, uh, 3.30. 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a free event, so uh, people can come up and bring every family member that you have uh, and come and see the yeah. show. And friends. And yeah, and friends. Friends. Yeah. Friends. Friends. No pets. Oh, no no pets, no service dogs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a cool show. I hope so, yeah, I think it will be. Uh, I've never been in that room. Uh, actually, never been in that um, hotel, so I hear, I hear good things. And, uh, I like checking out the new sites, and um, obviously, see a Fest is my Christmas, basically, as an artist. And, yeah, that's a lot of that weekend, and uh, you know, it's my rock star time that I get to kind of let loose. How much we've grown throughout the year before I have to go back to work. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because when you try to explain it to people, if you're in the media business, music, labels. Publicity management. This is our Christmas. Exactly. Yeah, I really do love it that much. It's um, you know, like I said, I think this is our fourth year. Um, you know, from the first year to the next year, you get to see, like I said, that little bit of growth, and then that little bit of growth in the second, third, and, and well, it was quite a big jump that year. And you know, we met fans we never knew we had from other countries and other parts of, the, of this country, and it's hopefully that'll keep. Uh, keep compounding, but uh, it's just a really nice experience, and then when people from the year before remember you, and I've told this story, I don't know how many times, but uh, there's this sweet little lady that has been coming, I think she said since 1986, she chased me down and found her last year, because she had got her picture with me the year before, wow. and remembered me, and uh, she, her husband's dragging this little suitcase behind him, you know, and she's running all over the place, and she runs up to me and says, hey, I have her picture from last year, will you sign it? Because she took it on like an old school, you yeah. know, camera, and uh, so anyway, she whips out this folder and opens it up, and it's like this thick, full of her with everyone wow. that you've ever, you know, since nineteen eighty six, Garth and Alan Jackson, when, you know, when it used to be all the big names, yeah, <laughs> and, and before, but before they were big, yeah. like she had their yeah. pictures just like with us, you know, and uh, it was just so cool, and I was right tucked in there with them, and, that's uh, really yeah, cool. So unfortunately, she sent me a message. On uh, social reasons, said she can't make it this year, the first year since '86. Wow. So because it's just, she said it's too hard. I have to take a picture and send it to I'll have to, yeah. yeah. That's, but that's why, I mean, there, there's enough for me to love this festival. So you're uh, you're big with the little sweet old ladies. That is our, that's our bread and butter, yeah. Uh, the, right. the babies and the old ladies. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, both in the drooling stages of life. Yes, yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if I could just close that demographic a little bit, we'd be, it'd, be, yeah, it'd, be, it'd be good. That's what we're working on. Yeah, I'm working on closing the demographic. <laughs> the gap. Five and 85. <laughs> um, so what's your CMA schedule like? Oh, uh, well, we obviously get your thing uh, Friday, and uh, I know Saturday we're playing the, the Stillery and uh, Alley Taps um, showcases, and then uh, Sunday's the big day. We've got a uh, spotlight stage at in Fanfare Sunday morning. Uh, for the times, don't I can't remember. So we'll have our schedule out, and then everybody just check it out. Um, oh, and I don't know we're also doing the Riverfront with Fox again on Friday morning. That's so cool. I always look forward to that. You never know who's going to pop in, and they crank you out of bed about five o'clock and ask you to sing. And it's, yeah. a, it's a good time. Yeah, yeah it's funny <laughs> because so many times artists, are like, I can't sing at ten. Like even doing the show, I can't sing at ten o'clock. I get it, and and it's like, you know. For Fox, you got to sing at 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you just, you know, you make do, but uh, it's definitely a little more taxing. you got to get up, you know, have <laughs> a nice greasy sausage biscuit or something. <laughs> to get everything going. Uh, 
You, oh, you learn tricks. Yeah, 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 you yeah. learn tricks. Or, you know, the whole just don't go to bed the night yeah. before, so you, that'll be the end of your day. Yeah. That one usually doesn't work out the greatest. Yeah. But. <laughs> That's going to be exciting, being you know, on the spotlight stage, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. And again, that just shows the growth that we've been able to accomplish year after year, you know, and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll, you know, everybody will show up and it'll turn out great. And, you know, we just, like I said, we, that'll be kind of the end of the CMA weekend for us. So then we just go back get back to work and shoot for next year again. And, you know, and like I said, it's this snowball that we've been able to form and just, Kind of compounds a little more and more each year, and that, that's the way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of artists that they kind of you you hear about them immediately, and everybody knows about them. Mm -hmm. But there's been all this stuff going on behind the scenes for years, like you. Yeah, those uh, yeah those overnight successes. Yeah, yeah and that's. Uh... I mean, the ones that are that do come out of nowhere are rare. They they're mm -hmm. there, but yeah. Um, well, I mean it's. Yeah. I'm not be lying if I said it wasn't hard to be patient and you know and, and just keep uh, having faith and keep super serving. The, you know, at, at first with a really small group of people, we just try to take really good care of them. Yeah. And then the next year it was a little bit bigger. We try to take really good care of them. And uh, you know, and so I think we've been fortunate and, and uh, willing enough to do that. That, uh, like I said, those people tell a few people and it just you know it spiderwebs out. It's like a hair and, shampoo. Yeah, commercial. yeah. <laughs> they told two friends, and they told two friends. Yeah, and they told two friends. Uh, I mean, and they, and that's really the way it works. And um, it's, but like I said, it's hard to be patient when you know you got a good product. You know, you got a good team that's dependent on you for work, and you know, and you're dependent on them to do their part. And it, it's, it, for a long time, it just feels like it's going nowhere. And then yeah, once it starts to kind of click, and you know, now we're getting to a point where we see a lot more results than we used to every time we do something because there's that many more people. That made more eyes on the show. It, it's amazing how it works too, because the first time you were on the show, you were really excited, and then the second time, I was like, "Oh yeah, it's okay." And then I was like, "Oh, I'm doing that show." <laughs> oh, well, I'm still excited. <laughs> it's, you just get more seasoned, but I mean, it is there is a truth to that. Not as, not at an excitement <laughs> level, but more of an adrenaline level. Like it's the same thing with yeah. you know a show. You know, used to it didn't matter if I was playing the VFW yes. hall. I would have been asleep all night afterwards because I'd just be so jacked, you know. And I still get just as jacked during the show, but it's that after the show coming down yeah. that happens a lot quicker. You than don't have to do. come down too much from this show. Well, I'm going to be jacked all day, man. <laughs> uh, well, this is a nice vibe, though. See, I, I like stuff like this. And, sit in front of the big and as you know, I love the I love the interviews with you because it's just a conversation. It's yeah. not You're not staring at a fact sheet. Reading off the you know the stuff, it, it, I like the conversation. He can't read. It's it's cool. <laughs> when, I mean, some interviews that that's great, but those there's a lot of those. And yeah, and that was one thing. Like the first CMA fest I did, I remember it, we had an interview room, yeah. and it was cubicles, and you just go in, and it's just rapid fire, and you literally just went from cubicle to cubicle, and it's the same getting the same twelve question. questions yeah. over. And but then there was this one woman, she just the fact sheet away and we just sat there and had a five minute conversation and that was by far that's the one interview I remember yeah. because that was you know different, different. and they kind of last few years we've not done as much of the interview process at CMA Fest and uh, it's I've always enjoyed interviews but you're right I mean you do it can get a little monotonous whenever they're rapid fire like that but I always enjoy yours because oh, it's, it's easy it's a conversation you always get a good vibe going on we got a studio audience, you know. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay for you to come back on the show. All right. uh, so you've got a new single out. I do. Yeah, uh, it's been out now for a couple months. And, That's uh, nice. What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your single. Uh, well, it's a, it's a fun one. It's um, a little more lighthearted than the last couple weeks. Well, yeah, a little more so than the last couple we've had. It's just a real you know fun kind of don't take yourself too serious uh, you know see somebody and come across the room and say hey let's cut all the BS and just get right to it you know, you know, <laughs> kind of thing and uh, but it's that's a great pickup line yeah <laughs> well that's essentially what this song is yeah. a pickup line turn me on it's just telling this lady that you know hey you're doing it for me let's uh you know like I said let's cut
professional songwriting, uh, and it was you know obviously humbling, but it was just it was great to work with him, and it's the first co-rap we released. Um, yeah, because you've written everything. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know we get to that point where I was wanting some fresh takes on some stuff. Um, not that I was out of things to say, but I was out of complete thoughts. Mm -hmm. I had parts, you know, and so. And like I said, one, I didn't want everything to start sounding like random and stuff. They said, well, it's great. It just doesn't. Spotify and it just come out of the gate hot and it's rocking and rolling. So we're uh, just one of those fun songs to be around. You know, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. If I can do it at ten o'clock morning, <laughs> <laughs> you can do it here. You can. <laughs> All right. If you were a kiss, you'd be melting the ice and the whiskey. I'm drinking. Been bumping knees all night long. You ain't pulled away, so unless I'm wrong, there's something going on. We can pay up and we can slip off. We can sit here and just talk about anything. First uh, meeting we had, 
come in. He said, hey, I got up this morning and worked on something. He played like the whole first verse in the chorus. And then I was like, <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, Dude. so we knocked out literally that second verse and we were pretty well done. So it just, like I said, he's so efficient and yeah. really opened my eyes to how song actual songwriter. You know, I'm an artist that yeah. happens to write songs. But he's a songwriter, you know, and that's all he does. And he's, you know, so you just really see the difference in the caliber of uh, their work ethic and their style and everything. And, and it, it's hard because most new artists end up writing their own stuff out of necessity mm -hmm. because you can't get access to right, big uh, writers. and well, you can't even get access to the throwaways the big writers. Right, have. and that's a, that's a testament to to my team, you know, that that they're able to. Have these connections and you know, and these relationships, I should say, and uh, you know, are willing to kind of put a lifeline out to me and, and give me in the room with them. And Jeffrey, my producer, he's the one that hooked me up with Ash. And you know, he, Jeffrey's been in town for years and just knows a lot of great uh, everybody in every fa you know facet of the business. He knows somebody, and so he's been such a an asset to me and uh, and his willingness to believe in what we're trying to do. You know, um, so it's it's huge. Um, I just, you know, hope I can keep keep doing it, keep working, keep learning, you know, like always, and uh, keep getting in the room with these guys. And you know, it goes from the song right, that song, the the record on it is produced so well, and everything, you know, from Ash being the songwriter too. This was my first project with Jeffrey, my producer, and then first project in a new studio, first project new session players. So it was all new, right. but it was all just such a you know, such a step up, and so I say all the time, so humbling to me because you know you get in the room with these cats, and you're just like, you know, how did I end up here? Who, you know, why am I here? <laughs> like something here doesn't belong. How did I end up here <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it, it's it's just an amazing part of it that I love. You so seem much. you seem you know from the past interviews that we've done, you seem much more confident with. Your music and what's happening. I the, the music, the product. I call it the yeah. music. Is I know it. I know it's by far the best it's ever been. You know, because of the people that I'm working with and the people that are are taking the time to really put their stamp on it. And you know, I mean, I I, I can do what I can do, but whenever you have everybody around you is the best at. It's a de demonstration of your growth as an artist too, because I've watched this over the past few years, and it's it's like that old joke about Michelangelo sculpting the Statue of David, and well, how did he do it? He said, well, I just chipped away everything that wasn't David. <laughs> right. and, and but that's that's the making of an artist is you start out writing all your own songs and doing things you think you should be doing because you've seen other people doing mm -hmm. them, and then you find out those particular things don't. Well, I started out writing for myself because I just needed an outlet. Yeah. I wasn't thinking that far ahead yet. But then it turned into, okay, now I'm writing for myself out of necessity once I started this journey. And then, you know, now we're fortunate enough to have some songwriters coming in. But in that process, like you said, what you learn is, okay, this doesn't work for me. This doesn't fit me. This, And it's, it's essentially just finding, it's getting rid of everything that doesn't work so that what does work can shine through and what really is you. And that, that's another thing, you know, we have a lot of confidence in who I am now.
these are these are my people. This is where I want to be, you know. Cool. Then do the next song? Yeah. <coughs> I'll do one of my faves. All right. This is this is a couple back, but Sinking Ship is great songs. Thank you. All the warning signs said, keep it in the bay. But I tossed up my lines and I sailed out anyway. Into an ocean of uncertain ways. Now that I'm sinking, I guess I'm the only one to blame. Cause the rescue ain't coming, my radio's fried. So, we've got the CMA Festival coming up, uh, the free show, let's plug that again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 615 Live, you are on, it's a great lineup, uh, Zoe, the Runaway Hamsters, Crystal Day, Chris Moreno, Jordan Rayner, Cherish Lee, you, uh, at 3.30, Yeah. and uh, then Bailey James and Cindy Thompson, so it's a killer lineup. Yeah, and I mean, they're all great artists. I, uh, Jordan has become one of my favorites, Jordan Rayner, she... Uh, I saw her, met her at a, at a songwriter thing uh, a few months ago, and uh, just a killer artist and a sweet girl, and just came out of nowhere in my world because I, you know, I, ever she knows she's been here longer than I have and knows a lot of people, but I just, you know, she played right after me at a songwriter. Deal, but it's all me. about knowing the people who I know. You. Yeah, people. it just blew me away though. She's <laughs> she's a phenomenal guitar player, great artist, uh, great songwriter, yeah. and uh, so I'm excited to see her again. Yeah, we, we've got it all posted because I've got some other meet and greet opportunities um, as well. And, um, you know, I'll just be like every year.